that all of y'all made it out of bed. Yesterday was a <laughs> intense, a beautiful day to say the least. And um, I want to first of all acknowledge and honor and thank from the bottom of my heart all the volunteers who work their, excuse my language, but it deserves to be said, work their asses off. <laughs> it was just it just was what it was and I apologize so uh, it was just an intense beautiful day though and and I really um, I'm so grateful to see everyone here today uh, really grateful that we have James Twyman who's gonna be doing our service here. James was as you know phenomenal it was a beautiful beautiful day also the heading is Barb and Bob uh, you all did a terrific job. They inspired me to do a lifestyle change, which I start tomorrow, and I'm so excited. Tomorrow. You all are such an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> and John Davis, uh, I, as I said yesterday, one of the sweetest people I know and a beautiful being, and he gave a great talk. Uh, it was so inspiring and so right on point, and it's so great to have you here today. And Really, I told him this morning, I said, uh, I said, you did a great job. He goes, oh, you're just saying that. I said, no, I would have told you if it sucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't. It was, it was really great. So thanks, John. You were great. <laughs> and uh, obviously, Lori, Lori, uh, this couldn't have happened without you. So thank you, thank you. And, speakers that are not here I thought um, uh, Victoria may come in uh, but everyone was equally awesome and, and beautiful and it was just such a powerful powerful experience so who in this room was there yesterday yeah <laughs> well, there you go that takes care of it well one thing we uh, we definitely overbought food okay. I mean, to such an extent I think we could have uh, fed 500 people twice and uh, anyway uh, Bill and Gorin uh, were sweet enough and Dr. Bob I heard he pitched in too they took some veggies home they made two beautiful pots of soup we brought some salad uh, make sure you have uh, some to eat after the service please please we've got so much and it was so delicious and the cookies were awesome and, and Ed's a testimony to that right now. <laughs> and uh, Ed and, and uh, Tim the, the drumming was so much fun you all did on the stage that was so perfect thank you guys thank everybody but I think you get that uh, that you are appreciated and loved and that's what we're all about and we I know we shifted uh, the pulse the peace pulse in the world yesterday way up and uh, I think everyone there was transformed by the experience which is an awesome awesome thing so I'd like to take a minute and uh, let's get things rattling and moving a little bit so I'm gonna invite you to stand up and sing with us and Ed, Am I going to be in your way? Out of your mouth? <laughs> I don't want to be in your video. We'll just see you back.
is shake it up, baby. Okie doke. So, welcome again. Um, I'd like to go through and welcome everyone who's a visitor here and have you introduce yourself. That could take a while. So, uh, come back, sign up for our email list. We love having you here and uh, welcome you to join us every Sunday. Um, I do want to make two acknowledgments. This man in the back of the room, Bob, he's back after his surgery. And uh, we're just glad you're back. Good morning, Uget. Yes, glad you're here. So, yay. And also, um, I'd like to acknowledge a, a, a ray of sunshine that walked in the door. Um, Ann Kirby. So, glad to see you looking so bright and sunny and Thank you, Claire, for bringing her. It's so sweet, and uh, hopefully you'll come back every week. Sorry. Now you know where we are again. Okay, yes. I just want to, we just got five new boxes of metaphysical books this morning, three bags. <laughs> We're cheaper than Crystal Vision. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love Crystal Vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I have Ed Dames remote viewing his entire course and Robert Gilbert's whole course on Egyptian and European energy work, but they're on VHS. So if someone has a VHS player, <laughs> if someone wants it, Bill wants it. Okay. Okay, he wants the remote viewing. I'll take the Egyptian guy. And who wants the Egyptian stuff? Oh, you've got to share it. Okay, okay share it. Okay, great. Well, that was easy. Okay, so now Bill's going to be spying on all of us. <laughs> okay, Kelly. I just want to say, I want to thank all the volunteers yesterday. They did such an amazing job, such an amazing job. And I wanted to say that we co-hosted this event like a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Like I said, and thank you, Kelly, for organizing. It's never easy to organize that much going on and that many people, but it all worked out perfectly. So great job. Thanks, everybody. Oh, so um, upcoming events this week. Uh, today at 6 p.m., Ed, the cookie man who dances, and, uh, he will be uh, offering in this room a primordial sound meditation, which is fabulous. Uh, he brings a didgeridoo and his flute and different percussion, and you just zone out on the floor. It's probably what we all need. So bring a mat and a pillow and a blanket and come on in and just snuggle up and, and go to La La Land, 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Also, one more thing just to add to that. Mm -hmm. um, if though you're saying laying down may not be a, an issue or maybe an issue for you so you can't come that's not an issue we set up chair stations for you as well you can come and if you need to be seated sitting down we have that option for you so do please come don't let anything stop you okay thank you and we also have the water wars movie coming tuesday at 7 p.m you want to tell them a little bit about it we're going to post it. Yeah. <laughs> it's very informative. And I feel that it's really important for all of us on this planet to know about how crucial the water is and uh, what we might be able to do to ensure that we still have some. Well, indeed. Well, thank you for that. And at 7 o'clock in here, we'll have uh, a great time. and. Um, it's always informative, and we'll probably have a discussion after, right? Yes. Okay, there you go. Uh, so that's our main events. I know this past week, besides the topic, we uh, all survived the eclipse. We had a fantastic uh, experience, uh, our group did, but I know uh, lots of people went to other places and had great experiences. So uh, it's all part of this new world emerging, which is so awesome. Um, Yesterday, in the closing, um, I caught a little brief video. It was so touching standing up there watching James lead the group in, in the closing ceremony and everyone joining hands and singing 
give peace a chance. It's just about a minute long, but I thought it'd be something that you all would enjoy seeing. get a glimpse of the day and the energy and uh, I know we're never going to be the same. So somebody's phone is dinging. If I didn't, I didn't mention it. If you wouldn't mind silencing your cell phones, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And uh, I'm looking forward to sitting down and uh, enjoying uh, a wonderful experience and message from James Twyman. So James, welcome to the Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am so happy to be here. Yesterday was... Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, yesterday was such an amazing day, and I am so happy to be here again today. And I'm so impressed with the beautiful spirit here in this room, in this community. I've, I've always known that this was a special area, and now I can see why. So thanks for being here. And we're just going to allow it to continue to roll. And as you know, for those of you who were here yesterday, a big part of that for me is music, being able to sing together and to open up our hearts through music. And one of the things that I did share yesterday was a rather crazy idea that I had a few years ago. I, I knew that we were coming up on the 50th anniversary of the scribing of A Course in Miracles. It was in 1965 that Helen Schuckman first heard the voice that said, this is A Course in Miracles, please take notes. And she did just that. And I had this inspiration that I wanted to write a song for all 365 lessons, record them, distribute them during that whole year. I, I went to my, my, my dear friend Vicki, said, well, what do you think of this idea? And she felt it immediately, and it was the biggest thing I'd ever taken off with before in my life, the biggest commitment I'd ever made, and it changed my life, literally doing this every single day for a year, and then it led to the next year, which was to do the text, and then this year, the same thing, a book I wrote, which I had yesterday, unfortunately, almost everything's gone from yesterday, but a book called The Art of Spiritual Peacemaking, I'm doing 365 songs to that. The, you know, after a thousand songs, I think I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> For three years, every day, writing this music and sharing it with thousands of people around the world has certainly changed my life. And I wanted to start off uh, with a prayer which I think is very appropriate. It's one of the prayers from the workbook of A Course in Miracles, and I think I think every church like this should start off with this prayer because it's so perfect for opening up our hearts, opening up our minds, allowing the spirit to come shining through. So let's get the microphone over here. And the lesson is, in quiet, I receive God's word today. And that's what we're going to allow. I receive God's word today.
something, I've excluded something else. It's all of it. One of the things that I said yesterday, which I've been saying a lot lately, is I, I no longer believe in God or a God. I believe in only God. That's all there is. So it's wherever we look, wherever we feel, wherever we love, that's where God is right now, especially right here. And it's in quiet that we receive that. <clears throat> And so there's a conversation with God happening every moment if we would but listen, if we would but have the ears to hear. It reminds me of a story uh, that I heard a, a while ago. You know, as, as I was driving here, we, we passed, uh, I guess you'd call it a strip mall. You, know, you see these a lot in cities and different places. And I noticed in this little area that we drove past this morning that there was a, a little church in the strip mall. We, you know, sometimes we call them strip mall churches. You know what I'm saying? Have you seen these? And I've noticed, like, I lived in Chicago for many years, and sometimes they would have really, really incredible names. So this is a story about a strip mall church that was called God Almighty Tabernacle. Okay? And one particular Saturday, the minister at this strip mall church was in his office. He was preparing for the sermon the next day. He was getting ready to leave to go home when he decided that he was going to call his wife to let her know that he was on his way. So he dialed the number, and it rang, and it rang, and no one answered. And he was confused by this because he knew she was home, and there was also an answer machine. So he hung up, thinking maybe I dialed the wrong number. He called back. Sure enough, she answered, and he said he's on his way. Well, the next day, he was there at the church in this strip mall, God Almighty Tabernacle, and he was... He did a beautiful service, and everyone loved it, and later he was back in the office by himself, and the phone rang. So he picked up the phone, and a man's voice on the other side asked, did someone from this number call me yesterday? 
And the minister said, wait, you know what? I think I did. Because I remember uh, I tried to call my wife. I thought maybe I dialed the wrong number. This must be the number I called. And there was a long silence. And then the man finally said, I need to tell you something. He said, last night was a very dark night for me. In fact, last night I decided that I was going to end my life. And I was serious and I was ready and I had written a note and I had everything arranged and right before I took that final step, my phone rang. <clears throat> and I have one of those caller ID boxes. So I looked at the box <laughs> and it said, God Almighty. <laughs> said I was so afraid I couldn't pick it up. <laughs> but the point is God is calling each and every single one of us. The question is, are we going to have the courage to pick up the phone and say, hello? <laughs> are we going to listen? The guidance is always there, but are we going to listen to it? Are we going to act on it? And for most of us, the guidance is saying, this is it. This is the moment. The moment you chose to wake up. What other moment would there be? But right now. And you feel that. I know you do. You sense that this is the moment that you chose to awaken. It's almost like before you go to sleep, you set the alarm. And you decide what time you're going to wake up, right? Maybe it's 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. For me, it's 10, uh, 9.30. Uh, I'm a musician, I get that. Uh, <laughs> and when the alarm goes off, sometimes you integrate the sound of the alarm into your dream, right? Have you ever experienced that? Where maybe you're too tired and so for a, a few minutes, the sound of the alarm becomes a fire truck that's sitting in front of your house in your dream. And you, and you look out the window, you're wondering, why is this fire truck wailing its siren in front of my house? And it's only when you wake up that you realize there was no fire truck. It was the alarm that you set. You decided that this was the time to awaken. So for each one of us, that, that alarm is going off. And it's showing up in our dreams in a lot of different ways. For me, it showed up in the form of A Course in Miracles. For some of you, it may be the same, or it may be something different. It may be this, this community right here was the alarm clock. And once again, the question is, will you say yes? Will you wake up? Yesterday, I talked a lot about what I call the the soul attraction or the soul's law of attraction. We don't realize sometimes that the soul, that the truth within you is the most powerful, attractive force in the universe, literally. There is nothing that has more attractive power than the power of your soul. But only when it's focused on who you are right now, not what you want, not what you hope to be one day. That's all the ego. And the ego also does have an attractive force. The ego can manifest, but it always manifests in limitation. So if you want unlimited wealth, if you want unlimited happiness, then you have to turn to the soul. And one of the most important things about the soul's law of attraction is that, as we said yesterday, it doesn't know anything about the past or the future. It knows only about right now. So the key is to feel the emotion of having that which you most desire right now. Another word to use for this would be pretend. <laughs> to be like a child and to pretend it's already there. Jesus said you must become like little children if you're to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And it's so true. And what do little children do? They pretend. They pretend what they want. But what we're called to do is to pretend what is already true. And when you pretend to be something which you are, guess what? 
It's like magic. Suddenly, the truth of that experience manifests in your life because it was always true. You just forgot it. <clears throat> now, there, there are two people I've been thinking a lot about lately who are great examples of this. And one of them uh, is someone that I've always loved, and uh, it's a story that I've heard recently. Um, but there's a, a man who I, I never actually met, but I, I was in the room with him once um, back in 1983. He was recording a song. Um, the song was called Purple Rain. Oh, Me and about 300 people were in this room with Prince as he recorded that song. And I remember hearing it for the first time thinking, oh my goodness, that is quite a song. And I, I've never forgotten that. The energy that he had, the, the, the charisma that he had at that time. But I heard a story about him just about a week ago that I loved. It was some of his former bandmates talking about what, what it was like being with Prince before he was so famous. And they said that when they pull up to a grocery store in the car, Prince would say, you need to go in and buy this and this and this for me. And they'd be like, well, why can't you go in and buy it for yourself? So he said, I can't, I'm a rock star. If I go in, it's gonna cause a huge stir. And they would look at him and say, dude, no one knows who you are. <laughs> but see, to Prince, he was already that. He was feeling the emotion of that having already happened. He was pretending or feeling in advance. So the word pretend means to pay attention or to give feeling to something pre, in advance. So he was feeling in advance what he knew himself to already be, a rock star. And they said even then, even when no one knew who he was, he was that. And so he lived that life even before he had his first record. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another person I was thinking about, uh, you know, being from Chicago, I, I, I have great love for Michael Jordan. And Michael, wow, I mean, considered to be the greatest basketball player of all time. And before Michael became the great star that he was, you know, he would practice every day longer than anyone else. He, he would practice taking that last shot at the end of the game, the shot to win the game. And yet when he was a sophomore in high school, he was cut from his high school team. He couldn't even make the team, but that didn't stop him. He still pretended that, you know, five, four, three, two, one, and he'd make the shot. And he kept getting better and better because he pretended what he knew to be true within himself. <laughs> and then finally, when he was, I can't remember if it was a freshman or a sophomore at Georgia, uh, North Carolina, they were in the big championship game, the NCAA championship against Georgetown, and North Carolina is down by one point and the ball gets passed with only a few seconds left to this freshman that no one knows. And with complete total confidence, he takes that shot that he's taken thousands of times before, and of course he wins the game. They still call it the shot. Of course, we all knew what Michael Jordan was to become, but at that time, no one knew who he was. But he had that confidence in himself to take that shot. So the question is, do you have that same confidence to take the shot that you were given? Because we were all given a shot to take. And this is it, right now in this moment. This is the shot that we have been called to take for heaven, to bring and to manifest heaven right here, right now. And just like that man with the phone call, the minister, or the man rather that he was calling, we have to have courage, and it takes courage to pick up that phone and to listen. <clears throat> so let me share another song that I think guides us even deeper into that experience. I started off with one of the Course in Miracles chants. Actually, no, I think I'll do a different one. This is one that I, I wrote actually when I was doing the music to the text of the Course. Because, uh, as I said, I, I, got, I got on this roll of writing a song every day. I couldn't stop and now I'm in the third year. So this is one that what I was doing, the, the text for A Course in Miracles. And it was so beautiful because it, this one, it was like 
Jesus is speaking directly and individually to me. <coughs> I'll teach you to remember who you are and have always been. There is a light so bright within you and this light sleep in and there comes a point where your body is really telling you to wake up and what happens usually your dream becomes very chaotic right all sorts of weird things start to happen and all it really is is your body is saying wake up you've been asleep too long well look at the world right now isn't the world reflecting that chaotic mind that is requiring itself to wake up? How necessary and important is that right now? Are you or me, are, are we going to solve?